on is on exploring solids. So a polyhedron is kind of like a polygon, but it's a three-dimensional shape. So it's a solid that's bounded by polygons called faces um, that enclose, encloses a single region of space. An edge, as you guys would think, is the edge of like where two polygons meet is a line. Um, so a set, line segment form are the intersections of two faces. And a vertex is a point where three or more edges meet. So you could have polyhedra that look, you know, like a prism. This would be called a rectangular prism. And so this would be an edge, right? And then this would be a vertex. You guys all know all these words, right? So number one, so it says determine which of the following are polyhedra. So as we said, polyhedra have to be um, formed by poly polygons. So polygons are going to be the faces. So the first one, a cylinder, is that going to be a polyhedron? No, because there's not like polygons that are its faces, right? It's kind of that rounded side. Um, so this is a no. Circles aren't poly polygons either. Um, the next one is yes. What about the sphere? No, because we don't have those polygons again. And then we have yes. The next one's no because the circular base, and the last one is yes. <laughs> All right, so a regular polyhedron is a polyhedron with um, congruent regular polygon faces. Do you guys remember what a regular polygon is, Jacob? A regular polygon, what is that? So regular polygons where all the polygons, or all the sides of the polygon are the same size, and all the angles are the same size as well. Okay, so all of the angles and sides are congruent. Um, a cross section is just basically like if you took a plane and you chopped through. It's kind of gross, but I always call it like a guillotine. Like if you take a guillotine and you chop through. <laughs> Jacob Sager, pay attention. Our keys quit distracting him. All right, so when we cut through, um, whatever our cross section is, whatever shape that is, um, is going to be our cross section. So Sam, look up here. So when we cut through, do you guys see how this cross section is a circle? All right, so number one, it says, describe the cross-section shape formed by the intersection of a plane through opposite edges of a cube. Okay, so if we have a cube, do we all know how to draw a cube? Typically, I draw a square in the front, and then I kind of make it go backwards with two parallel lines. So we have a cube. And so it says, well, what happens if we take the cross section? So imagine we have like a guillotine type thing chopping through opposite edges of a cube. So like this edge and this edge would be opposite edges. So imagine we have a shape that goes through there. What's the cross section of that shape then? What shape is formed? Yeah, like a square or I think it's actually like a rectangle. Um, so it would be a rectangle. The reason it wouldn't quite be a square is because this um, diagonal line is going to be longer than it is um, back in here. All right, so describe the cross-section shape formed by the intersection of planes in the corner of a cube. Well, what if we have that same cube and we cut through the corner of it? So if I chop off the corner, any ideas on what shape's formed? Kind of hard to draw. So if I chop that off, what would the cross section look like? So when I pull those pieces apart, do I need a three-dimensional shape that we can look at? So if I take her box, so Sarah's box here, she has like little <laughs> and I chop through the corner. So what shape would be formed? I heard someone say it. it's a triangle. Yeah, so it's a triangle cross section. It makes like a little pyramid when you cut it off. It is a pyramid shape that you cut off, but the cross section, like the base of that, is a, is a triangle. It's kind of hard to see. So maybe it'd be better if I did it over here. You can see how if I cut that off, it's going to be like a little triangle. All right, so Plato, have you guys all heard of Plato before? Plato, Aristotle. So Plato was a Greek mathematician and philosopher, and he described the five platonic solids. So they're named after him. 
and these five solids are shown below, and there's only five of them, okay? So the platon platonic solids are the five regular polyhedra shown on the right. So again, what does regular mean for a polygon? For a polygon, it means that all the sides are the same length and all the angles are congruent. So if I'm talking about a polyhedron, we're going to have all of these regular polygons as the faces. Okay, so that's going to be a regular polyhedra. And there's five of them. So the first one is called a tetrahedron. Do you guys know what the word tetra means, like the stem tetra? So it means four, exactly. Do you guys know that that's why it's called Tetris? Do you guys ever play Tetris? Do you guys know what I'm talking about with Tetris? Oh, Am yeah. I really that old? <laughs> yeah, so Tetris is where you have, like, maybe one looks like this. Uh, maybe one looks like this. So each one is going to be four pieces, and these things drop from the sky, and you have to figure out how to arrange them. So Tetris means four, Tetra. And then we have a cube. So a cube has six sides to it. Octahedron, how many sides do you think octahedron has? It has eight faces, exactly. And then dodecahedron, do you guys remember dodeca? Twelve. And then icosa, we haven't learned that one yet. Nope. Twenty. Yeah, so that's going to be a twenty. All right, so for tetrahedron, it has four sides. Cube has six sides. Octahedron has eight. Dodeca has twelve. And icosa has twenty. Okay, so that's the number of faces, the number of polygons that are formed together to create that shape. Okay, but we want to know the number of vertices, so this is a little bit harder. So go through, and I want you to count the number of, like, points we have. So on this tetrahedron, it's not hard. We have one at the top. How many do we have along the bottom? How many more? Three more. So how many total do we have? Four. All right, how about a cube? We have four along the top. How many along the bottom? Mm -hmm. So how many total? Eight. All right. Octahedron. Uh-huh, because we have one on the top, we have four along the middle, and we have one on the bottom. Ooh, dodecahedron. This is getting harder. So we have one, two, three, four, five along the top, because it's a pentagon shape. And then along the middle, a little bit harder, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I feel like there's one more. Ten. We have ten along the middle, so we're at 15 now. So how many total? And then five along the bottom. Twenty, yep. And then the icosahedron. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, so we have one on the top. It looks like we have one, two, three, four, five along the middle. Is that right? Probably five along this edge, too. So 10, 11. So I think we have 12. A little bit hard to count, though. All right, so now the number of edges. So we go through and count again. So we have one, two, three along the top, four, five, six. How many for a cube? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How many total? Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. What do we think for the octahedron? Mm -hmm, there's 12, exactly, because there's four along the top, there's four along the bottom, and there's four along the middle. The decahedron. <laughs> That's where stuff gets real. When you get to the dodeca and icosa, you're like, oh, man. I believe there's 30. Did you guys count 30 as well? And then I'll tell you how many there are on the last one. There's 30 on the last one as well. Okay, so there is a pattern to this. So a mathematician named Euler 
It looks like Euler. It does not rhyme with Ferris Bueller. It's not Euler. It's Euler. He came up with a way to relate these. So here's my hint. It has something to do with vertices plus faces. So what do we get when we add vertices plus faces? So for the tetrahedron, how much do we have? Eight. How much do we have here? Fourteen. Eight plus eight. Yep, B plus F equals E plus 2. That's the formula. And that works for everything, not just the platonic solids. It works for every single polyhedron that we form. Okay, so B plus F equals E plus 2. Um, no, because it's going to be uh, this number that's over here. Add 2 to it to get this. So B plus F, you get it, equals E plus 2. So you could do V plus F minus 2 equals E if you want to. All right, so V plus F equals E plus 2. So it says verify that the following figure satisfies Euler's theorem. So let's find the number of vertices, faces, and edges and see if it works. So vertices, how many vertices do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, another 6 along the bottom, so we have a total of Oh, you guys don't have this figure? Oh, oh, yeah, I think I have some errors in my chapter 12 notes. So I think there are missing a couple of figures. Now you guys get to draw this beautiful shape. This beautiful shape is called a hexagonal pyramid. <laughs> so you're going to draw a little hexagon for the top. And then you're going to extend it down to create a hexagon along the bottom. A little bit hard. Oops. doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> so the hexagonal, let me all write it down just in case you guys are artistically challenged, you can look one up. But the hexagonal uh, prism has 12 vertices. How many faces? So how many will it have going across the middle of the shape? So if it's a hexagonal shape, six. And then what about the top and the bottom? Two more. So we have a total of how many faces? Eight. So now how about the edges? Let's do the same thing. So going along the middle, I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six. Going along the top, how many edges will I have? Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Going across the bottom? One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have a total of 18. Does V plus F equal E plus 2? So let's see. 12 plus 8, is that equal to 18 plus 2? 20 is equal to 20. It works out. So it verified Euler's theorem. Okay, so a soccer ball is not one of these platonic solids. Okay, so remember the plat platonic solids had to have the same regular figure attached a certain number of ways <laughs> to create that shape. So like in the tetrahedron, all of those were triangles. All of them were these um, right, or not right triangles, um, equilateral triangles. The cube was all squares. The icosahedron was all equilateral triangles again. Okay, so this is not one of those. Why is this not one of those? It has, well, kind of. I think it has straight lines, though. I think once you blow it up, it kind of looks like it's not straight. It's kind of rounded, right? Okay, look at the shapes. So the black shapes are what? Pentagons. What about the white ones? Hexagons. Did you guys know that about a soccer ball? So it's made up of pentagons and hexagons. So it can't be one of those platonic solids because it's not made up of, of, of the same shape. It's not the same shape. All right, so a soccer ball is a polyhedron with 32 faces. 20 are regular hexagons and 12 are regular pentagons. How many vertices does the polyhedron have? So this is pretty hard to count. Are you guys slowly counting the number of vertices? It takes a long time. So I give you a hint here. 
So it says each edge is shared by two polygons. So let's start with the faces. So we said there were 20 hexagons and 12 uh, pentagons. So how many shapes do I have total? 20 plus 12. So I have 32 faces. So we got that. Okay, and the vertices is hard to count, so I'm going to count the edges then. And I gave you a hint. Each edge is shared by two polygons. So let's look at what I'm trying to say here. So this edge right here is shared by this one and this one. So I'm kind of double counting on my edges, right? So if I talk about my 20 hexagons, I'd have 20 times 6 edges. And if I talk about my 12 pentagons, I'm going to have 12 times 5 edges. But what do I have to do with that number? Because I get 120 plus 60, I get 180. But that's too much. That's too many edges. So each edge was shared by two of them. So I double counted, I have to divide by two, right? So I get a total of 90. So then instead of going through and counting every single vertex, what we do is we use our Euler's formula. We say V plus F equals E plus 2. So we say our vertices plus our faces, 32, is equal to our edges, 90 plus 2. So we get 92 is equal to V plus 32. So how many vertices do we have to have then? Yeah, we have to have 60 vertices. That's our answer. So if you have trouble counting every single individual one, you can do that. Now what you might do is if you have if you were tasked with finding the number of vertices, you could get a soccer ball and you could like draw on it, use like a dry erase marker or something and count each vertex. You could do that. But if you just have this picture that's kind of hard to see, oh, what's happening on the back of this shape? All right. So let me stop here. I'm going to look